ocean crashes on the rocks. Where I go to collect my thoughts of this new life. I think I see a new life. Day 12. Spent the last five days on an endless series of depth tests of Andre's deep diving suit. Guess he doesn't want me to implode on the live stream. I do hope it's giant squid proof though. The mapping drone located a brine pool near where Andre's family has been hunting. That is, before it went AWOL. Ready to die. I mean dive. I'm in and okay. 
You sure I can't talk you into another test dive at this step before we stream? Enough test dives. It's not like I'm doing a spacewalk. Well, with this suit, you probably could. Are we gonna talk about suit crush depth again? I think we can probably roll. Starting live stream. Welcome back, ocean friends. Tonight, I am deep. Midnight zone, no light from the surface deep. Tonight, we're using Andre's lure drone to mimic the Atolla jellyfish to lure large predators like the giant squid. <laughs> it's certainly not all my tech. I'm building on years of prior research. Don't forget our mission to the prime pools. Oh yes, Arena will fill you in on that later. Okay, Andre, how do I find the Lyra drone? Look for blinking red lights in the water column. need to get too close, you can activate the lure from there. Andre, have you done this before? I haven't, but others have. How long until we can expect the lure to attract a predator? <sighs> it's hard to say. It's a big ocean. But if you lose patience, I would find some real Atola jellyfish. I have a feedback system set up to improve the lure as you scan them. Of course you do. For those watching, we will be scanning these Atola jellyfish to make sure Andre's lure matches the real thing. It does, but it can always be refined. Not much confidence in humanity, but plenty in himself. Thank <laughs> you. 
got the jellyfish scans, though. Andre doesn't need them. In truth, they should improve the lure. I would not waste your time. Getting a few impolite comments on the screen pointing out that giant squid don't feed on Atolla jellyfish. They're right. Actually, the Atolla puts on this light show when under attack in order to lure creatures big enough to eat their attacker. Might have some useful human applications. I think we need more Atolla scans to approve the lure. to live stream this particular dive. I am glad I can't see the comments. I would agree. My grandmother had the saying for times like this. I, I'm not going to try my grandmother's accent on a live stream, but loosely translated, it means if you get bored waiting for a giant squid, you can always go to a bride pool. That's a pretty specific saying. that these atollas were already making their blue alarm before you swam close. Most likely a sign that they have detected predators in the region that threaten them. I know how much you enjoyed that, but do you mind if we check out the brine pool before we check on our whale cam? If you insist. You got what you wanted. This is my giant squid. Hmm. Is that another one of your grandmother's sayings? No, but she often used this one. Hurry up and collect my specimens for me. What an expressive language. It's no giant squid, but I promise you, you won't have to wait to find it. Hmm. <laughs>
At long last, welcome to the brine pool. I know it's really a salt lake under the ocean, but it looks more like a witch's brew. I have been teasing Arena, but a brine pool is a diverse micro-environment within the ocean. It has its own ecosystem. And each one is unique. So that means the microbiology is unique and could hold groundbreaking solutions to human problems. Each time I take new samples into a lab here on this ship, it's this magical discovery moment where I tingle all over. I fund my own research so I can pursue what I know to be important. And people ask me, how much money are you going to spend to collect some bacteria at the bottom of the ocean? If these bacteria hold the cure for a disease that relieves even just a small amount of human suffering, how do you put a price on that? That is some giant squid. Pushing you away, point. Sperm whales are back on the hunt. Look for the drones. They will seek out the sound of the sperm whales and then idle nearby. We hope that today, Andrea's tech will make it possible to document how a sperm whale hunts the giant squid.
tag some sperm whales so we can eavesdrop on their hunting. One of our viewers wants to know if there is a problem with the link since the waypoints keep appearing and disappearing. No problem. The drones are in stealth mode, so they will only track the whales by sound. I better swim fast. We'll keep good watch over you. squid knocked the camera right off. I had that camera feed in full screen on my visor, and for a second I thought it was lights out for me. Sounds like a good time for the sub to pick you up. Live stream out. Sound to whales is everything. It's their hands. These are animals with the biggest brain on Earth and the most powerful sonic apparatus. They spend a lot of their time deep down. They're, they're diving for an hour at a time in darkness. Just like a submarine is echolocating, they're kind of... They ping a signal out and then they wait for that signal to bounce off something and come back as the signal. And from that information, they could get an idea of what's there. They constantly click. And uh, that, that click sometimes can be really loud and uh, you can feel it in your body. It's like uh, going to a DJ and uh, feeling that bass. Once I had an experience with a sperm whale, it clicked, my ears almost like bounced back. It's really an amazing feeling, you know. You don't develop a huge, complicated brain if you're not using it. Whales have little channels of communicating where they could talk to each other hundreds of kilometers away using sound. Sperm whales make clicks in sort of rhythmic patterns that we call codas. Any family might have 20 to 25 different coda patterns that they use when they're having conversations with each other. And some of them are unique to different places in the world. In the Eastern Caribbean, they make a lot of what we call a one plus one plus three. That sounds kind of like this. And that's only ever been recorded in the Caribbean. And it's been identical for the last 35 years. These are really different ways of life that are being labeled by these coda patterns. In the same way that human language is kind of a shorthand for where you come from. You can make a lot of missteps when traveling simply by speaking incorrectly or introducing yourself differently. Do you hug, do you shake hands, do you bow? And a growing concern has to do with the noise that we're putting into the ocean. Everything we do impacts everything they're doing. The sound is causing high levels of stress in animals like this. No one wants to live at a rock concert. You can imagine trying to have your home inside an arena while some metal band is playing. And that's increasingly what the ocean feels like.
It's Irina. Since there's no dive today, I'm going to lose myself in the wet lab to work on those samples you sent up from the brine pool. Hey, have you listened to my daughter's track? Interesting, right? Mirai, remember the tag we found on the turtles? I put it out on the network and I got the strangest message back. I'm going to take a tender to a small island nearby and check it out. I'll explain everything later. Still no mapping drone, by the way. Hey, it's me. Nana didn't qualify for the study. Doctor says we missed the window. Whatever that means. Hard to tell what she remembers now. It's tough. Not sure my head's 100% there with school. Honestly, seems like a waste of money. Anyway. Brine pools are amazing habitat. It's a lake on the bottom of the ocean. And it's this surreal seascape. Chemically, each one of them is unique. These brines undoubtedly contain bacteria, archaea, and viruses that are unknown to science. We know that they're incredibly rich in undescribed life forms. They have the perfect cocktail, the perfect recipe for life. These sites aren't just salty, they can be violent, characterized by eruptions and incredibly unstable conditions. So to live in them, you have to not only be hardy, but you have to be able to endure constantly changing conditions because not one day is the same. The organisms that live there, they undergo a constant biological warfare with each other to dominate the environment, to survive in the system. The biochemicals that they produce to do that biological warfare are applicable to curing diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's. They produce antibiotics and antivirals that can also be used to improve human health. And we drop targets as we go, so we know exactly where we sample. Exploring these habitats is absolutely necessary because the metabolic potential there has the capacity to change the way we think about medicine, to change the way we think about antibiotics based on our knowledge that we gain from studying these incredible environments in the deep sea. Imagine if I was sent in to go study the Mona Lisa and I come in with a pair of snippers and I'm like, I'm gonna need to cut this baby up a little bit to see what kind of chemical composition is going on there. Like, you wouldn't do that, right? We don't have to kill these animals. We don't have to kill to understand. If we could do a single cell, that means we don't need to kill 20,000 animals to be able to really understand that one. We could do our work much more non-invasively. So we are working uh, this year on a new project to deploy uh, tags on orcas. We need to learn more about uh, the diet and how they use the habitat. So by deploying those tags, we get the information we need. It is the least invasive method, it is suction cups. So it is not a scratch on the whale afterwards, which is something we really like. In the deep sea, we use these like robotic claws from the oil and gas industry that gets you the sample, but this is so archaic. So we've been designing something called squishy robot fingers, which are ways to be gentle when we study the deep sea. But I think we could even take this another level. There's some organism, we quickly encase it. It's like a medical checkup. We give it a swab to get its genome. We image it from all directions. We open it up, that animal goes away, and we have more information than we've ever had before. These animals are Mona Lisa's. Our perception of them should change. We should be more delicate.